Edie Lush at Hub Culture here in the Copenhagen Pavilion. And I'm very pleased to be joined by Nadia Maizi. She's a professor at Paris Tech. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about why you're here at Copenhagen. So uh, just to introduce Paris Tech, it's a school of engineering in uh, France. And uh, we're a team of researchers, scientists in uh, Copenhagen. Uh, mainly uh, our skills are about physics and mathematics and economics and uh, we uh, want to be part of the uh, movement uh, about uh, all these climate negotiations. So we're trying to promote science inside uh, all the discussion that are uh, ongoing now. It's a funny kind of message because you would think that science would actually be at the heart of, of these climate negotiations, but is your message something slightly dis different? Is science being ignored? Um, I can tell you that uh, among the Ringos, the Ringos are the research uh, NGOs that are in Copenhagen. There was a first question when we had the first meeting. Uh, how many physicists? So no hand was uh, up. And how many uh, economists? There were economists. Lawyers, a lot of lawyers. <laughs> and uh, no mathematicians. So no science is not really present. Maybe you have climate science uh, with uh, paleontology and uh, uh, agriculture and uh, things like that, but you don't have basic science like mathematics, physics. So what's your message from <coughs> the mathematical and, and physicist world? What are you, what's your point from, from there? Emissions are mainly relying on energy use and energy is relying on technology and you have to understand technology to uh, understand if the targets that uh, politicians are uh, putting on the table are feasible. So uh, our message is uh, you have to take into account uh, what uh, is uh, installed in the countries and what the technologies are relying on before maybe uh, finding uh, the good target that each country has to reach. Tell me a little bit about the French target and whether you think that specifically is, is reachable. So in France we have um, uh, the pledge that we are going to divide by four by 2020 our emissions. And we've made a study uh, in order to assess if this target were technologically feasible. So uh, we think that the target of uh, 2.45 can be achievable, but uh, uh, dividing by four means that you will not going to live like you are living here with all these lights on and the heating on and you can reach the targets that uh, politicians are putting on the table but uh, you will have to change completely your way of, of life. My, my feeling is that in Copenhagen uh, the technology point is not uh, enough uh, discussed. Uh, people think that we're putting targets and then uh, technology will follow the targets. But it's not the case because uh, inertia and technology is uh, very strong. So, Do you not think though that by providing targets that business will naturally move to meet those targets? You're, you're, you're suggesting something very different. Is no, I don't believe that business uh, has uh, is interested with targets. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Just finally, if you had one, uh, if you had one message that you could get out to the to the leaders of Copenhagen, what what would it be? The um, the main point is that uh, I think we must be very cautious because, on one side, if there is no agreement about strong targets then people will be very disappointed. But if there are agreements on strong targets that cannot be uh, followed by technology and in five years we will all realize that these targets are unachievable, then people will also be very disappointed. So they have to find a compromise between these two points and maybe they have to ask uh, uh, help from scientists to uh, assess uh, the better pathway, so okay. that's it. Quite sobering stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Nadia Maisy from Paris Tech, for joining us here at Hub Culture in Copenhagen.